this looks a lot more promising. There's uh, just a little over 50 cords here right now in two nice big piles. So it's time for me to get this processed. 15 or 16 cords in a truckload, depending on the truck and depending on the driver. Some of them will bring me 18 cords in a load and it's the same truck that brings the 15 and I can process 14 cords out of the 15 or 14 cords of the 18. So tell me who's getting the, a better measure there. So anyway, I'm excited to see this. This looks really good. So there, I managed to get my three cords done today. It's early in the afternoon. I should change the oil in my processor motor. It's about 20 hours overdue, but it doesn't seem to be, I mean, it never uses any oil. And I mean, never uses not a drop of oil. Got my dog with me here, tying me up. I usually change it every 100. I got about 120 hours or something I bet on it. And I run synthetic. So I want to make sure that it's going to last a long time. So I pulled the drain plug while it was good and hot just a few minutes ago before I went on that last delivery. So I'll fill that back up and spin a filter on it. And I might, I just might process one more cord just for fun. So, and that way my trailer will be filled and tomorrow morning I'll be able to make a delivery. Blue Jay yelling for rain. In the meantime, I just got this uh, little electric chainsaw in the mail. I, I got one before from the same company and reviewed it and it was, I thought it was A1 actually, it was surprised. For, for what you need to expect over these little chainsaws, I like to have one on my belt almost. Now I opened this box up earlier, but I didn't, I didn't take anything out of it. But I want one on my belt for when I'm making maple syrup so I can keep my trail clean. And this kind of a saw, this is from the same company that uh, CC, S-E-E-S-I-I, -E -E U.S. I know they're made in China, but it's an American company. They reached out to me. I, I reviewed their 6-inch and their 8-inch saw. Now they sent me a 12-inch saw. Something assembly required, it looks like. Um, but I used to take a, a little silky type saw with me. And a, sometimes I take a reciprocating saw. And it would just clean up some of the branches that are around my maple syrup uh, tap line. A couple of spare chains, look at that. Small charger, two batteries. Look at that little tool. The bar, bar scabbard. Down here, oh, a couple of screws, little screws for who knows what. Small Phillips screwdriver. Bottle of chain oil, so I can only assume that it's uh, I should put a battery on charge while I'm sitting here with my bare face hanging out. It's a 21 volt. Let's see if I can find a place in there to charge this up. I've got a Ryobi 18 volt chainsaw. But it doesn't really spin up fast enough, in my opinion, to do what I want it to do. I'm going to look at the instructions. Let's see how I do. Assembling this little fellow. Without any uh, instructions. So that there. That's going to be turned out. That's going to be an adjuster. I'm going to loosen these up. Take it out of there. That can go off of there. There. little grease uh, grease fitting there, kind of cool in case there's any doubt of what this is, it's a chainsaw 12 inch chainsaw <laughs> something that you may or may not realize is safety uh, chaps or safety pants chainsaw pants don't work with electric saws so they got to come up, and they may have already come up with something. From what I understand, the material that's inside the chainsaw chaps or the chainsaw pants, its job is to ball up around the clutch and stop that instantly. Well, if you don't have a clutch, what's it going to stop? I mean, it, it may fit inside there somewhere and stop that chain, but it certainly isn't going to be anything like uh, like it should be I suppose uh, this pin has to be yeah, perfect. 
So you can see this here. You can see how that is turning this screw and it's moving this pin farther that direction. Let's see if I can get it somewhere close. There we go. Put these two nuts back on. And this nut on. Snug them down finger tight. And Up. It's actually pretty pretty good. It feels all right. I wonder if there's a place on this somewhere to store these little tools. And we have this fellow right here. I will stop short of calling that a chain break, but I will put it. A little small guard handle. This way or this way? Nope, gotta go this way. Screw back in. Alright, that's that. Full wrap around handle. Let's see where that goes there. Let's put it from this way, like that. Like that. That's that little bag of screws comes in handy. You know, my wife uses the other one a fair bit. She will take that uh, small, the eight inch chainsaw is the one she finds the handiest. I put a new bar and a chain. She wore that one already, but she cleans the hedges up and some around the garden. Oh, she's got a garden stake to cut off. She'll, she'll grab that instead of a handsaw. That works all right. This kind of stuff that when I get a review request that I'll gladly accept. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't suit me, I'll still be honest with the review, but I'll give it away when I'm done with the video, done with my obligation. I get the funniest one was, uh, I had an AI hairstylist uh, program. They said, Dear the Log Father was the way the email started out. And they said, we're so enjoying your content, and we thought our product would be perfect for you to showcase. And it was a program that you would, from what I understand, you'd put your own picture in like a selfie, and you'd add all kinds of different hairstyles. Well, they obviously didn't see too much about me, because I'm about as bald as a hard-boiled egg. Anyway, very funny. I thought that was odd. Yesterday, I got a request from somebody to review an expanding shower curtain rod make a video about that goes great with my uh, with my content all right now I need a little chain oil without making a big mess or a little mess good enough I use automatic transmission fluid uh, on my sawmill for looping the chains and the, uh, the guides on the head, that kind of thing. All right, I guess I'm ready to put a battery on it. Does this have any life? Yep. Two thirds out of the box. Tells you the percentage. Look at that. So this little fellow here, what it does is it 
adds oil, more or less oil. So it must have a pump. Let's go cut something. So here's a good example of a tree that's overgrown. Three trees here together. So. I'll tell you what, that's not a bad thing at all. It seems to have plenty of power. I don't know what the battery's going to last like, but I'm going to find out. And you have two batteries, of course, to come with it. Certainly is no steel MS500. But then again, it's a different tool for a different job. Here's an old dead spruce, dry as dry can be. Huh, it's pretty all right. I feel like I want to use it with one hand. be a good ATV saw. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this little machine is a win. It works, thing works awesome. I don't imagine that chain would last very long or the bar. I didn't put any grease in the tip, but I will. I gotta go up to my processor where my little grease gun is. But we've been 68% uh, battery left. Started out with 70 something, I forget. Not under load, of course, but I cut three or four little trees down, this old spruce down and junked it up in a couple of spots. So if you had this on your ATV and a spare battery, you don't have any extra fuel to carry. This would be an absolutely spectacular little tool to have with you so that you wouldn't have to think about uh, carrying your big chainsaw. And if you had a tree across the road, even if it took you a little extra time to, to clean it up, I think it's a win-win. Honestly, I do. Anyway, cool. I'm going to put some links below for this if it's something that you're interested in. I don't make any money off of it. They sent me the tool to try and it adds content. So I know review videos aren't everybody's favorite, but anyway, it all all together it makes it makes for a program for everybody of course the last thing a man does is read the instructions manuals and it gives you some uh there's a light of course on that charger i wasn't sure I was, i've seen that but what it does tell you in here which i thought was kind of nice is uh the warranty every seaside tool or cc i'm not sure how that's pronounced is thoroughly inspected and tested before leaving the factory. It is warranted to be free of defects and workmanship in materials for the period of three years from the date of original purchase. Should any trouble develop during the what during this Huh. Let me read this again. Every seaside tool is thoroughly inspected and tested before leaving the factory. It is warranted to be free of defects from the workmanship and materials for a period of three years from the date of original purchase. And this is the part that I find a little clumsy. I'll, I'll read it to you. It might be translated directly from Chinese to English and it lost something in translation, but we're missing the two years. That's a year and a half, two years. Should any trouble develop during this one year period, after it just told me I had a three year warranty, return complete tool to CC's service center if inspection shows the trouble is caused by defective workmanship or material, CC repair or replace at our option without any charge. So we have a three-year warranty, but it's only uh, 
should any trouble develop in the one year. So I'm not sure what that means, but maybe if CC sees this video, they'll comment down below somewhere and and uh, and explain what they mean by that. So, but it could be just a typo. Maybe it has a one year. Maybe it has a three year. I'm not sure. It doesn't say anything anywhere else about the warranty that I've that I've read so far. So, but it's not meant for being a forestry tool. I don't have to. That goes without saying. It's meant to have. A tool in your car or your ATV, that's where I'm going to put it, is in my ATV with the spare battery. It'll fit in the little box in the front of my ATV, as a matter of fact. And if i got to limb up something or, or running through my sap line in the wintertime, I can have it on my belt on a little carabiner so I can clean up some branches that maybe broke down or a windstorm came through and knocked some things over. I can clean that up. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. So before I sharpen any of these blades... For anybody i clean the blade so this one here it looks it's rusty it was obviously on the mill for a long time but if there's a couple of thousands of uh, a couple of thousands of um, debris on it then that's a couple of thousandths of inch of set that you can't that you're not accurate with so i soaked this blade I actually had to soak this one in diesel fuel and then there's a sharp edge on the side of my center and as my center goes through It'll clean that up, but I still see a little few little spots here that I want to want to clean up. I just take this blade, give it a little scrape. Could have a wire wheel set up out here. That would be the ideal situation. If this was the same size, same length blade that I have in my mill, I just pop it on and run it to a an old piece of poplar or something. But this is what takes the time. I don't like to see these blades drop to me in this state because I don't have the time for $10 to set and sharpen a blade. It's not worth doing. I'm going to spend 10 or 15 minutes cleaning up. I've already done this one once. So there we go. So let's drag that back to the weld. I always start at the weld. And as you guys know, I'm sure if you've sharpened any, any blades before, there's a tooth that goes that away from me, that direction, which is the one we're going to do first. And that one, we're set at ten and a half thou, which is a little lean, so I'll move it up to about, about 12, 14. Yeah, we're good. And it advances the third tooth, and I give it a little squeeze, and that'll put them all at about 14 thou. I don't know how big a saw, how big a, a motor is on this saw, so I don't want to be too aggressive. Really, all I'm doing is just making sure they're all the same. We get a pretty good rhythm going, and it's pretty easy to get to the end of the, of the blade pretty quick anyway. You gotta be careful at the weld because you may have two teeth going the same direction at the weld, depending on how many inch long the if it's an even number, then you'll have a good weld. If it's an odd number, then you'll have two teeth that have to come together. My blades are 158 inches. Coming back up to the weld again. I put a little paint mark on the weld. Right, go back to where we started. Just flip this tool over to the other side. And just slide on that shaft. If, it would, if I wasn't, if I didn't have the hammer set up, that would have just fallen on there. So I'll just go back. The tooth, drop my advancer down. Start right there.
So I've got one that's set too much. I just checked it out. There's one there that's about 25 thou. So sometimes I can bend them back without breaking the tooth off. And this one here is also a little rich too. Well, let's take that back. A little tool you can buy is like a, a little wrench that goes over that to uh, unset that tooth. Let's bring that back, start from scratch. Let's see if we can get somewhere close to that. There, now we're at 9 thou. There we go, 15. Two there. Sometimes I get out of the set just moving them around and taking them off. Or I have to flip this blade inside out to put it on the sharpener. Sometimes a blade will get, or the tooth will get unset, so I'm careful when I turn them. One there about 17 now. I'm not going to bother with that, that's fine. Back where we started. Flip that blade inside out without getting any stitches. If I move the teeth away from me, then they're not gonna, not gonna flip into my legs or anything. So that's the effort it takes to set them. And this is a vertical sharpener, which takes up a whole lot less room in my shop, even though I have a horizontal setter, but I can do both at the same time. So I can drop the next blade over this one, set it while this one's, um, while this one's being sharpened. So I'm going to zoom in the camera. I'll show you how I set this up. So I'm going to push this, this, carriage in and you see how tight and how nice that fits. I don't know if that even makes sense. That's a CBN wheel and I've sharpened hundreds and hundreds of blades on this wheel and that fits that profile perfectly. So this this is a this is a 10 degree blade and a 10 degree wheel. So I can show you quickly if you needed to adjust that angle, you pull this clamp off. And you'll see a little door here. I'll show you real quick. This is spring loaded. That's what pushes down on this door. And this door is what guides this. Now this block in here is starting to get worn out, so I'm going to have to soon replace that. Just lots of debris gets in there. So you have several ways to fine tune this. The first thing you would do is you would loosen this up and that you can see this whole carriage moving did i just move that camera away no you see this whole carriage moving so i would slide the tooth right up and i would push that in push the blade tight until that meets the same angle and then i tighten that up and i'll let it go so now that sets that sets your carriage so that your blade is going to go exactly to that wheel when it when it plunges in and if you had to fine tune this just a little bit more, you can loosen these stops up so that the, the blade hits these two stops. But this is the initial, the initial setup process is right there. Now there's two bearings. There's an in-feed bearing and an out-feed bearing. The in-feed bearing, of course, is pushing down on the blade so that your advance, this little tooth that advances it forward, and you can see here how that advances it forward. You wanna make sure that that always contacts the tooth and that this is being pushed down so that between this distance is always um, parallel or perpendicular to the stone, I should say. So then we turn on our grinder and this all can run off my blue eddy with no problem. This is uh, about 400 watts when it's running. That's both the motors.
So then we turn this in. Oh, I gotta put my clamp back on. I don't usually do this all with it, with it running. Alright, so then we crank this thing somewhere so that it almost hits. Turn. So this is on a lateral axis. I'm adjusting it over here. Great. Right here, I can adjust that axis here. So what? when I turn this little wheel right here, I'm moving this motor left and right. And then with this axis right here, I'm moving this whole carriage in and out. And you put a little strain on that. There's a paint mark from the weld. That's usually where I start this whole procedure. Give it one quick cleanup, and I can adjust the speed of how fast this is fed to super fast, or just a snail's pace if I wanted to. And this will even them all out, clean up some of the debris on the on the tooth, and then I'll turn this whole carriage in a few thousandths of an inch. The whole idea is to remove all of the debris that's in the gullet. Start from scratch. There's little micro fractures that are in the gullet. That's where your blade will crack. I break blades, but I do a lot of sawmilling too. I know thousands of foot feet of lumber, so there's no shame for the blades. to our weld again, which we're about two-thirds of the way there, I'll make my adjustment for my, almost my final cut. I don't know if you've seen or paid attention at all, but I have, I put a bungee cord here, and it just is hanging off of this wheel. I found that this bungee, this wheel will adjust just from the vibration of the machine, it will change the position a little bit, and I think it's just the slack and the threads. It's just, um, it's a Chinese-made machine. And I think the quality control in the thread pitch is just a little odd. But if you're just hang that much weight on there, that won't move. So that, that balances that out. All right, so here we're coming up for a weld again. Do a little better, bigger bite. And we're coming back for a weld again. the weld, to see the weld come out to the other side, slow it down, shut that off, shut that off. Now I have a look at the tooth. So normally what I'd be doing, while this blade is sharpening, I'm going to give it one more cut. While this blade is sharpening, I'd be sharpening the chain or be setting another tooth, that kind of thing. So it's not as if I've, um, not as if I'm babysitting this the whole time. Give that another bow. And typically do about 10 of those blades an hour, something like that. So if I had, depending on how long the blades are, I can do 10 of mine an hour and they're 158 inches. These are uh, 100 and, these are around 100 and, must be 140 inches, something like that. I'm not sure exactly, but they're a lot shorter, that's for sure. So if you can do 10 blades an hour, I charge $10 a blade, that's 100 bucks an hour you can potentially make. I'm not always sharpening blades, of course, but if I can do 10 of these in an hour on a Saturday morning before my neighbors wake up, for instance, then I feel like I've made my mornings pay pretty easily. I usually take advantage of rainy days to do this kind of job, but this customer wants his blades back, so I'm going to do that first. So, Anyway, this is just a nonsense, random, complete random video. I've got some more firewood. Next week's going to be a big week. I'll do some firewood videos. I've got some sawmilling to do, so I'll get some lumber videos done up. Um, I already changed the whole maintain my processor, so that's done. Um, 
yeah, I think that's it. I might get my motorbike out and go for a, a ride to the men's retreat and check the uh, the morning speaker out here very shortly. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll never beg for subscriptions or for you to subscribe. But if you feel so inclined, by all means, let's see if this, uh, this channel can grow. Um, one more thing. I know there's always one more thing, but I took a week off. Uh, you guys knew that. I went on a camping trip. And just to take advantage of the late summer weather, it's beautiful, spectacular where we were. And I went backwards by two months on YouTube by not posting for one week. I usually post a video every other day, sometimes every day for two days and then skip a couple of days. So I'm trying to uh, to work at getting a regular schedule, but it's, it's just impossible for me to get, you know, at five o'clock every second morning or something like that, a video is going to drop. So I took a full week off of posting videos and just in complete transparency, I went from about $521 or something like that to less than, well, it was $352 or something in my income. So that's a month's worth of income. So what they're doing is they're forecasting a 28 day window of income. So I lost like $130 by taking one week off from posting videos um, just keep consistent so I got to keep consistent and I'm still going to be I'm going to do my best to to stay the course till I get 10,000 subscribers and at that point I'm going to be weighing the pros and cons of either staying with YouTube or saying no more YouTube it's not worth the effort um, my sub my views are up and my subscribers are up everything's going in the right direction except the income the very second I stop producing videos my income drops right off to nothing so um, I don't do this to make a living but it has to at least sustain itself I do it because I enjoy doing it and I enjoy teaching people things so that's uh that's the passion behind it all not necessarily the money but part of that money has to come along to to make it worthwhile or else I just keep hammering out lumber and blades and and uh firewood and nobody knows anything about it so that's it over and out everybody